Hello, welcome, and good day to you. It's another Let's Update Modding OpenMW stream. And thank you for joining. Jumping right into it today. Got the usual tunes playing for you. Uh, TR soundtrack, Skywind, OC remix, all that good stuff. <clears throat> And uh, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, this is episode 51, and I'm still not 100% sure if my audio works right. But, uh, all right, maybe somebody can clue me in on that. All right, Smalio, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right, so moving into it then, um, and beginning what may be probably the last MOMW stream of the year. Um, and we're just going to work on remaining 6.0 items to launch. Um we are actually really, really, whoops, really close to launching. And within the past few days, a couple neat things have dropped. Um, let's see here. We'll go on over to the CFG generator. And so, uh, hey, hey, Gonzo, welcome. Good day. Thank you for joining. Glad you're here, my dude. Um, just going into kind of the Eltario. Welcome. Oh, yeah, awesome. So glad you're here. Just doing the 6.0 roundup. Looking at what we're looking at, what we've done, and trying to get an idea of what's left, and maybe knock it out. Um, and have a Christmas launch for the website uh, would be fantastic. So, uh, first things first, CFG generator is one of the stars of this update. Um, in addition to obviously the all the new content, the intensely curated ordering, pathing, content file or sorting, everything. Uh, another big star that supports all of that is the CFG generator. And so what you do is you pick your mod list. We're going to pick one day modernize. And you click this link right here, custom CFG selection uh, section. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, uh, you know, you might as well just go ahead by start uh, starting out by checking all. And then just go through the list, right? And And the intended workflow, actually, is for you to go in here, pick your mod list. Let's go ahead and uncheck all. Pick your mod list here, one day modernization. You start out at number one, and as you go through the list, you'll install the mod, noting usage info down here. Uh, and when you have it installed, you'll click this button, which if we go back to the CFG generator, and we reload the page, blammo, we see we've got Patch for Purists installed. Now, let's pretend we fast-forwarded through the entire list. We've checked everything. Everything is installed. Um, as we go through the list here, you can see it's all removed, meaning it's installed. We can then go through and, uh, I don't know, just check some stuff we don't want, right? Like, let's just pretend we don't. We want... We're vanilla animations purist. Okay, I really like that running animation a whole lot. Let's uncheck that. Scroll down to the bottom of the page. <laughs> You click Submit Custom Setup, excuse me, and boom. What you get right here is one day modernization preset minus the ones that you unchecked, right? And so we don't have, uh, for example, if we just go here, we will find simply walking. Doesn't exist, but if we go back to this page now, just to demonstrate, simply walking, you can see it's on the config. So, boom, a big star, again, of this update is not only... The huge updates that we spent a ton of time working on to all the lists, fixing and sorting things, but also, yeah, the ability to come down here and say, I do want this, I don't want that, um, and to get an actually properly asterisk curated config based on that. And I say asterisk because we don't yet, you know, you can very well come in here and like, I want Tamriel rebuilt, but not Tamriel re data, you know, which is obviously invalid. You could do that and our config won't warn you about that yet. We have the code in place to do that. It's just, uh, you know, one of those things. It's a work in progress. So, yeah, CFG Generator, big, big, big update. And um, I'm hoping that it will be, will be a lot more useful to folks going through the big lists and trying to sanity check themselves, right? Like, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm doing total overhaul. I'm on, you know, step 200. Do, how do I know if my stuff is good? Um, well, you know, you can... You can do this as you go along and be reasonably sure. And and there are some points within the list where you're going to have, um, you know, something might not look right because it depends on something yet to come. 
generally speaking, those are few and far between, but it does happen. But yeah, it's still nice to be able to come through here and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a portion of the way through the list. Give me my config so I can go in the game and check it out. And yeah, if you looked at my previous streams over the past few weeks, that's exactly what we did. And so um, just some things that were missing from that, of course, were the check all in the section, check all on the mod list. Um, and so that's all in place. There are other small things like making sure these things check when they're supposed to and whatnot. But uh, yeah, for now, we're not going to block the release on that. So anyway, let's go ahead and look at our to-do list here. Um, so, okay. This actually can be checked off. I added this to MLMW patches. I'm going to edit that right now. Uh, I think we're still waiting to hear back from MWGAC about logs on fire. Correct me if I'm wrong, Altario. Um, we'll come back to this in a moment. I'm actually going to save this. Okay, come on, GitLab. You can do it. All right. Let's start here with the top part, huh? Add these mods. Come on, GitLab, you can do it. All right. The turkey mod. Of course we're gonna add that one, but maybe that's a post 6.0 update. <laughs> um, so we actually have the community patch. Um, Uploaded to our server. I don't know if we added a mod for it yet, so that's still a... Uh, yeah, <laughs> a turkey mod involving Fag, which is the character I voiced from Starwind. Um, everything Sophie has made. Okay, so yeah, Sophie's got a couple patches we need to slap in there for sure. Um, oh, you added a page, Altario. Awesome. Cool, so we can check that out, but definitely there's a couple Sophie patches we got to add into the collection here. Um, Logs on Fire also pending... Uh, Waza light fixes. So actually, one of our friends from the community here. Let's see here. There we go. XB7 has um, actually kindly provided some instructions on that for Linux. For Windows, those of you using Windows, tune out right now. You got an exe file, you click it, and it just works. Todd approve. Those of us on Linux, we're a little bit less lucky and um, what our friend XB7 has worked out here is you can actually run the Windows EXE with Wine which yeah that works um, I am going to try to produce actually a Linux executable for this but if I can't actually manage to make that happen we'll go ahead and we'll recommend people use Wine for this um, which is kind of yikes but uh, you know it is what it is um so, yeah, props to XP7. We may well yet use that step. Um, and that would cover that check here. Uh, putting the win in Windows for sure. <laughs> you guys got it. Um, wow. So, I guess... I would say the past week, week and a half, we have been really aggressively hitting these final steps myself um, and and those of you on the team we've all been finding missing paths conflicting paths um, and and I feel like this at least is close to as perfect as it can get I think Eltariel mentioned there was a potential issue with uh, I forget what um, but yeah some excellent detective work has gone on there on Eltariel's part much appreciated just to make sure Unexpected things aren't overriding unexpected things, in a nutshell, <laughs> without getting into the whole spiel about it all. Um, patch mods that have been merged in their parent mod should have legacy redirects in place to avoid link rot. This is, I think, one thing um, that we really need to do. And uh, actually, Altario had made a list for me to refer to, so let's go ahead and look at that. All right, cool. So, um, one of the things I'm going to do here, I'm going to open up a, whoops, I just fat fingered a bunch of stuff. <laughs> there we go. All right. Okay. Um, 
cool. So I'm going to go ahead and this is a terminal inside the server and uh, of the website. So if you go to miningopenmw.com, this is our uh, this is our server. And what I'm going to do right here is uh, right. Okay, that's the one. Superstars books. Superstars books. Um, Yeah, going to take a little... That's something we'll need to think about uh, prior to launch. I think that's one of the last nagging things about the uh, <clears throat> about the load order. So anyway, going in here... Um, and what I'm trying to do is... Uh, I could do this on my local, like... <laughs> have another copy of the website, but I'm just going to use the server for this. Um, and so what I want to do is we'll get these mods... Uh, and I'm going to get the slug for each of the ones that have been canceled. So first off, let's go to, uh, um, yep, mod, okay. Mod and run object. You could do it all, yeah. If mod slug works with, uh, let's see here. Okay, um, beautiful cities of patches. Oh, okay. Let's see here. Let's try this instead. Objects. Filter. I must have typed, typoed something. Beautiful seeds of Mormon patches. Hmm. Let's try this. So this says we got what? Twenty seven. Okay. Let's try to whittle it down a little bit here. Twenty six. Okay, right. Excluding beautiful cities of Morrowind itself. All right. Let's try it again for mod in. And mod slug. All right. So going back to the website code base, I've mentioned this a few times during the stream, but uh, one of the things we have here. Yeah, it's good. It's not. This is a, just a kind of a tedious task. It's not really a hard one. It's just a little tedious. Um, yeah, so, okay, let's see, uh, legacy, here we go. So I have this function here, legacy URL redirect, and uh, we can find that under her probably. Yeah, here we go, okay, so legacy URL redirect function, you can see right here, is a view that will take a request and just instantly redirect all it does you can see right here it just redirects to the new URL and so we can look over here for some examples of what exactly I mean by that um, there used to for example back in the day be, uh, be an Android switch mod list <laughs> interesting bit of history there actually that now will if you go to lists Android switch it will redirect you to iHeart Vanilla Director's Cut. And my intention, if you're not familiar with the concept of link rot, my intention is any link, any URL that was on the website at any period of time, somebody might link it somewhere on a Twitter post or a, a forum or anything, it doesn't matter, Nexus. And I wanna make sure that that doesn't go to a 404, right? Have you ever clicked on a link and have it be like nonsense, not what it was supposed to be? You know, it's a bummer. And I don't want to contribute to that problem on the web, so we're going to fix that. Okay, end of explanation. Here we go. So, I'm go ahead and preserve all that. I, I put some, I group them kind of and put notes here about like what I'm preserving. Um, well, yeah, we try, Gonzo. We really try. <laughs> okay, um, let's see here. Yeah, typos like, see, like AST Eds remastered. Whoops. Yeah, I did that. 
Goblins. Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess this falls under Goblins, right? Let's go back to my shell here. So I got all these ones that are just going to go to Beautiful Cities of Morrowind. Yeah, let's see how... Okay, so let's see how much of this I can do here. It's a little hard to look at. All right. Moving on. Okay. And, So what I'm trying to do here, basically, is automate writing all this out, right? I don't want to do this all by hand. Because uh, we have quite a few of these to do. And it will be a big bummer. So we're going to just, we're automating. Whoops. Missing this, though. We're getting there. It looks good. I'm going to paste that in there. Oh, whoa. Ho. <laughs> Whoops. Hold on. Um. There we go. Uh, you know what? Let's just uh, slap this in here, huh? Um, I kind of have an alphabetical thing going here, so let's not ruin that too hastily. Hey, hold on. Pretty good. Okay, so how do we test this? Watch. <clears throat> All right. We will go in here to the code and we have this slug for some old patch one of many 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 it just works I'm telling you you can quote me on that watch <laughs> all right it's okay we can fix this <laughs> it just works when I do it right to be fair all right so what are we missing? We are missing actually the this part. I got too excited. We need to hand it this. So let's do that. And I 
actually, we don't need to escape that. Nor do we, yeah. And let's, uh... Let's just cheat a little bit here. Okay. Oh, wait. Well. What are you doing to me? <laughs> oh, it's, um, maybe. I need to escape these. Huh? I'm not sure why it's complaining. Uh, oh, <laughs> this should just be a string. I'm gonna try furiously throwing some escapes here. Why does it think new slug is a key? Oh, is this it thinks it's a, a literal dictionary? Maybe. I'm so confused. This is going to be easy. Okay. No problem. Let's just chop these out. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why, though? Something going on here. Let's try this. string instead of a format. Okay, good. Now let's put the curlies back in. What? Double them. Okay, Gonzo. We'll be here bashing our head against the snake. Actually, I think I figured it out. I know I've hit this before. And voila. Alright. Take two. Here we go. It just works. Hopefully this time. Come on, language server. It's not a good sign. Oh. Ooh. Why is this bad? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. Positional argument follows keyword argument. That's because I put this after the name. What is wrong with me? Um, easy fix. Nope. 
There we go. All right. Now, will it lend? There we go. All right. So, in case you forgot what happened, we are taking an old URL that doesn't exist anymore. There's no distinct page for the patch for purist BCOM patch. And we're making it automatically redirect to some predefined URL that makes sense. In this case, the main BCOM page. So, again, mods, BCOM patches, blah, blah, blah. We had to cut them off at like 50 or so characters for database constraint reasons. Um, but if I hit enter, like magic, my routing code takes us here. Hmm? And just like that, we're preventing link rot. Um, so I think we can count all the BCOM ones good to go. Um, some of these we're going to have to do manually, unfortunately. But uh, let's go through them one by one. Let's do the ones that we can automate first. All right. Um, so let's go up a couple times here. Let's open the real deal up here, okay. Go ahead and key in on that. Okay. That lines up with what Altario found. There's just three there. All right, so let's do this again, huh? We're just gonna change our query uh, slightly. Same basic idea. I'm going to get a list of these mods. And we're going to put a new URL. So let's get the right one. Here's the slug we want. And we're going to call this GH patch num. Yeah, I think that's fine. Ah, all that head desking just a minute ago. Totally was worth it. We can like, easy mode our way through most of these. Okay. This one. And just for posterity, we'll try one of these out. Here we are, and here we go. Cool. Next, uh, there were a couple of mop patches. Yeah, let's get these knocked out. Oh, me, oh my. It's a two pot of coffee kind of day, by the way. I don't know about y'all at home. Same idea here, right? We got a nice, consistent string. Thank you, past me, when I did this setup wrong. I at least did it consistently wrong. Alright, let's get the actual mop slug. And I just love this. Thank, speaking of thank you, past me. Thank you, past me, for writing the new search feature where you can type mop and get a. Uh, Um, that's a, yeah, so hey, Sophia, welcome, glad you're here, thanks for joining, and uh, good point about the OAAB upscale, I don't know, um, that's why I was like, uh, we're discussing, um, as I mentioned earlier in the stream, kind of the final points of fine-tuning the load order so the right things are loaded, and yeah, there's an OAAB upscale uh, pack that we're noticing is like 95% overwritten at its current position, so we're kind of deliberating keep it, remove it, fix it, and yeah, that's one we definitely have to look at, like what's remaining right now, what gets overwritten, how does it compare, you know, with what replaces it, and so on. Um, 
not set in stone on that. Thank you, Sophia. And I hope you're having a great day. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Altariel. Yeah, see, we are down. All the low-hanging fruit has been picked with regard to load order problems, I think. And we're down to this kind of spicy stuff, so. Ash and Blight. Yeah. Oh, uh, Smalio, thank you for asking. Um, so let's just go ahead and... Uh, uh, Ash and Blight, otherwise known as OAAB Data is basically a set of resources created by the community to extend the stuff you can make the game with. Um, new interiors, exteriors, rocks, all kinds of fixtures. Yeah, actually, Smalio, I'm using them in my mods too. I'll show you later on. But um, my signpost fast travel mod, for example, uses a coin from OAAB data. Um, and in my abandoned flat mod, I'm using all kinds of clutter and stuff. Yeah, it just, you know, so modders can make more cool stuff that is distinct but also fits with the flow of the game. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the most important mods ever created for Morrowind, I would say. Up there with Tamriel Data, Tamriel Rebuilt, for sure. Great question. All right. Uh, let's finish up over here with Mop. Eh, just one. Oh, yeah, this is a wow. This one right here is a trip down memory lane, folks. Open MW Mod Manager redirects to Port Mod? There should be two. What? Hey, welcome back, Gonzo. Oh, I see. Thank you, uh, Altario. You're right. The other one probably doesn't have the colon in there. Weapon sheathing. Let's see. Nope, nope, not you. Yeah, there's... <clears throat> All right, as I was praising myself for being consistent before, here I am being inconsistent. Thanks for the buddy check, Altario. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to have to change that number, but that's fine. All right, moving on. We got one for Project Atlas. one right here. Okay. Might not be worth to put this one through the machine. If we were doing these one-off, though, this is basically how you do it, right? You would just kind of insert this route here. And the order of these routes does matter, by the way. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, as long as you group the legacy redirects together, you're fine. Concept Arts Plantation being the next one up here. Uh-huh. That's another one we can just kind of one-off do. In fact, I think the rest we will be one-off-ing. And it's, um, for real, this is like one of the last things we got to do to launch 6.0. One of the last things. There's a bunch of patches we got to pat, uh, publish, too. Maybe we'll do that today.
boss music. This is kind of the end boss of 6.0, really, you know. <laughs> yeah, man, that Nobuo Amatsu. Amazing. Alright, oh, where did my next card go? Here we go. Uh, next up, Alba's ears. Okay. Mm, yeah, we won't be all, we won't actually be able to um, key in on these as we have been, so we're gonna do a one-off for each of them. Oh my god, that's awesome, Gonzo, with the black mages. Dude, that's uh, like one of my favorite songs, period. Like when you get to that moment in Final Fantasy V and that song cuts on, it's just like Final Fantasy V, I think, pretty underrated, by the way, too. That was I beat it for the first time within the past two years, um, all the way to the end. Really good. Really, really, really good. And underrated, I would say. Wasn't with Black Mages. Okay, yeah, probably Earthbound Papas or something, whatever his other jam is. Okay. I'm going to leave that open. We're going to redirect this one. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, man, that's awesome. Wow. <laughs> that's even better than the Black Mages, really. Yeah, I'm a little jealous, not gonna lie. Distant World, awesome. Okay. Thank you, Sophia. Good call out. Yeah. This is gonna go. This is gonna merge into. Probably let's take a look here. Various patches. So this one, FM unique items. Yeah, folds into this one. Alpha ears. Various patches. Hey, XB7, welcome. Thank you for joining. Uh, I'm glad you hopped into the chat. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking out our mod lists and for all the help you've been throwing our way. Much, much appreciated. Um, actually, I was giving you a shout out earlier for your wine solution for the light fixes, which we may well go with yet. So yeah, glad you're here. We're just doing some, uh, you know, finish line tasks here to to get 6.0 out like we're you joined us like just at the right moment really we're on the verge of launching this one in the right place. Awesome. Yeah, I myself also am kind of in the same boat. I haven't done like a full total overhaul 
not only have I not done a full run in a while, but like just what we've added and what's come out in the past year, you know. <coughs> oh, and the tune? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. ITR patch redirect. All right, we got just a handful left, it looks like. Yeah, okay, cool. So these ones are going to go to OAAB integrations. Looks good. Wow, quite a few too. Those BCOM <laughs> patches are a chunk, 26 of them. All right, uh, two more here. Copy link. Run it again. And this is going into OAB data. There we go. Mm, yeah, I can automate this one. All right. Let's get back out here. so close I can feel it. Okay, a little bit more than a handful left. I lied before. <laughs> the last chunk of uh, Ramiros mods are going to be the most grueling, but uh, we'll get through it together. This one is going to go into all snow shipwrecks. OAAB shipwrecks. file is getting to be a little bit on the unwieldy side eventually what we'll do probably is um we can split out like the redirects and stuff into their own file and you can include them django has a include facility for uh url routes um 
Not gonna do that today. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> okay. This is one I folded into the MLMW patches. Because why not, right? Ooh. Had to look at that twice. Oh, geez. Keep finding more and more typos. Highlighted. Hey -o. Just for the sanity of whoever wants to look at this. Alright. Moving on now. Abenhart Underworks. We're gonna put the uh, So many typos. Whoa, I did I did bad. <laughs> Let me fix this real quick. Okay, that's better. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I was going to say for OAAB for Adam Amit. That's not one of the ones we're <laughs> redirecting. We'll redirect or redirect. Which would work. Just be a little awkward. Okay. We left off here. E, Evan Hart Underworks. MOMW patch. Just this silly little thing to automatically tell the mod we're not using Rebirth because we're not. And it's nice of the mod authors, of course, to put that in there. Hey, that's me. Oh my god. Yeah, oh, see, Altariel bringing up the tough points. <laughs> yeah, we should just, I think, delete all the mod lists and just say, everybody use Rebirth. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> yeah, nothing against Rebirth. The Red Mountain, for example, you know, pretty cool. Um... <laughs> All right, boom, that one's out of the way. Uh, now this one, oh my. Yep. Yep, that's exactly what I was talking about. Personally, I'm not one who thinks that Red Mountain necessarily needs to be, like, pointy. You know what I'm saying? Plenty of actual real volcanoes are, like, L less steep even than vanilla red mountain so it's not a problem for me but we had these discussions on IRC long ago before the OpenMW discord even existed even before discord existed yeah Daedric oh my gosh you saw me do that Oh, yeah, nice. Good call, XB7. Um, a lot of people feel compelled, right, to, like, total overhaul. And, uh, you know, graphics overhauls, is, uh, it's, a, it's a sensible approach because you get in some modernized graphics, but we have taken care, especially in the beta, to not put gameplay in the mix, you know. Um, obviously, Beautiful Cities of Morrowind kind of crosses the line. Yeah, I agree, right? Like, BCOM will add some content, but I feel like it's a... Uh, it's a worthy compromise. Um, but yeah, good approach. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Agreed, Gonzo. Yeah, totally. Um, good point, Altariel. Yeah. Uh, 
some of the new additions too. Yeah, uh, NCGDMW Lua edition, the leveling mod that I wrote, the latest update. In fact, the options that I've selected for total overhaul, not only are we leveling slower in the new update, but I've also set GMST such that your skills will increase slower too. So like just overall, it's a way different experience um, than vanilla where you're going to be like smacking everybody around after you find your first stash, you know, <laughs> and you're going to be rich. All right, I'm getting distracted here. We're not dark nuts here. Come on. Hey, hey, you know, that's actually a wow. Sometimes the shuffle gods, they just bless you like that, you know, and we have been blessed thusly right now. Opening mission. You ready? Ah, nice. That's what we're going for, for sure, you know. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, many of us have played Morrowind a bajillion times. So, like, you know, it's fun, like, smacking people around being OP. That has its, its certain appeal, but there's also an appeal to playing Morrowind and, like, being genuinely concerned when you enter a cave, right? Like, gotta make sure we're ready. Like, you can't spam potions. You're probably not gonna be rich. Um, and, and, yeah, other points out there. Alright, I'm, I'm slacking here. Okay, we've got... Wow. Okay. This last chunk is going to be a little painful. We'll get through it together. Let's go ahead and mirror, mirror us. And we will just Chris mirror PDR. Where are you at? Oh my god, this is terrible. Not ordered. Clan Fear Replacer. Blammer Puzzle Box Replacer. Good. Ebony Mail Replacer. Ice Blade of the Monarch. Always makes me think of the Monarch from Venture Brothers. Just these. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put these kind of just... I'll alphabetize them later. For now, we're going to just put these in here. Half. Uh, let's start with this one. There we go. This is the slug we need. Okay. Uh, it blends. All right. Excellent. Uh, let's plow through the rest, huh? So, Chrismir, PBR, done. Clan Fear Replacer, next up. Oh, no, no, I got it. I'm a habitual saver when I'm coding, just constantly saving my work like a fool. And actually, a nice thing is if I don't save it, when I open up Magit, it saves for me. 
Thank you, Magit. What's Magit? Oh, it's my Git client. The thing you see on the right side of the screen here. It's the best, really. I don't know how people use Git without it. Sorry. do the mechanics mechanically. Ooh, just a few more. We're so close. Then there is, of course, the stuff that we're not thinking of that we missed, but we're doing our best. Ooh, excuse me. And the last one, finally. <sighs> uh, only sh overshot by two. I wasn't thinking about that at all, if I'm honest. All right, for posterity, let's sanity check this, huh? Volendrung HD, good example. Yeah, I I think that's all of them. I'm going to go ahead and push that up. Awesome. Wow. Feels good to have that out there. And actually, we can deploy that and... Come on, you can do it. My get client. Whoa, oh. Looks like my people are doing work alongside me. I love it. Oop. All right. And there we go. We can go ahead and do a quick deploy. Doing the no reset bit here a lot, lot faster than doing the reset. We'll have this deploy done and, well, it'll be fast. Alright. Let's go back here. I'm gonna go ahead and check that off. We have we have done that now. Ah, uh, somebody was busy. Okay. I might end up just taking a look at that after all. We're running out of... I swear I just checked that off. Oh. Right. Thank you for the sanity check. Hup. 
And with this, let's take a quick look at the MWSE wish list. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> some mods, like Races Respected, have a Lewis script, MWSE Lewis script accompanying them. And, I'll, and some of these we can implement for OpenMW. And we will do that. All right, merged. Sort loadouter. I think we're good. Ensure the correct mod lists are being used. Uh, uh, I assume this is for, like, um, our various ent record entries, right? For data pads, plugins, and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and check that out. I think we've done our due diligence for that, to be honest with you. Final steps? Ooh. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, and final st with that, final steps is getting crossed out. How exciting. So in addition to um, Sophie's stuff, uh, we also have a bunch of documentation to write for that. Where is the wish list stuff? I swear I was just looking at that. Oh no, that's over here. So yeah. Document which mods with MWSE required components that can be done with OpenMW Lua. This one, I think, could be 0 0.48. So let's actually... Alright, yeah, and I have actually extracted the Lua file out of here. Let's just take a quick look at it. And actually, let's uh, also... Hop out of the server... Thank you, server. There we go. The UI, right? So, for so for this one, the UI stuff, we won't be able to do it. Period. Um, OpenMW can't. Uh, okay, yeah, the bonus you could do with MW script for sure. So, so the UI totally not doable yet because they're editing like some vanilla UI action here. They're like overriding the vanilla UI. Um, these bonuses are really all that has to be implemented, um, or that can be implemented for this one. As you said, it could be done done by MW script. We could do that. So maybe we won't actually jump into doing this one in Lua just yet. But yeah, as I looked at this before, most of the action was um, doing this menu, right? All these, all the, all this code here is for the menu, and then yeah, making Kaius Casades uh, <laughs> specific height and weight. So, all right, we're gonna drop that one. And actually, let's go ahead and uh, legacy URL redirects. Check that off. Whoop. Don't try that at home. Up. Okay, um, back to our list. So I think um, I'm going to leave that one unchecked for now. Mage's Robes, though. This is a bit more of an interesting one. This thing is a bit more interesting. Um, we have several different robes that are added by this mod. Let's take a look at it real quick. Really? Mage robes. We have several different mage robes that are added by this mod. 
And the intention of this MWSE Lewis script is to uh, look at an NPC, and if they meet certain criteria, they're in a mages guild, designated mages guild of some kind, and depending on what their rank, they will be assigned a certain robe, right? So, excuse me. Skills, okay. Good. So what it's doing is it's looking at their highest magic skill. It's getting what robe, uh, has a function here to figure out what robe to use. We can probably use a lot of the same logic here. Uh, initialize, we'll do something similar. We'll probably do an engine handler such as um, on active. And really, there's nothing to it. The most interesting part of this code here is, yeah, you know, is, is this right here. Get robe for NPC. They're checking the blacklist, restricting by faction, and then, yeah, finding the right robe based on their rank and, uh, and their highest skill. Nothing too crazy. We could absolutely do this probably in an afternoon. Um, I don't know if we're going to do this on the stream right now. Maybe we will. Who knows? Um, and then, yeah, just a sandy check um, think to check if the data is there. We could do it differently with MW, uh, OpenMW Lua, um, but the idea will be the same. And then lastly, they are looking at the inventory of the NPC, getting rid of the old robe. Um, yeah, we can do that too. Ooh, checking if it has a script. Ooh, very, very good. I See, this is why we... That our friends over in MWSC land have already solved problems such as this, and so we are wise to learn from them. Indeed, we want to make sure um, this is an interesting way of detecting if it has a script or an enchantment. Let's take a look at how we do that with OpenMW. And uh, so I think we'll look at the types page here. Yeah. We'll look at clothing. And so on clothing, we can look at on um, the record. We can check for an enchant capacity. And we can check for MW script. So, boom. Everything we need to do is here. Awesome. All right, well, that was an interesting look at the Lua code. Maybe if we have, if we have time uh, before the end of the stream, we'll just make that. Um, okay. All right. So, yeah, actually, feature edition section here. I've been thinking, and uh, part of me really wants to, let's actually get there before I start talking about it. Part of me really wants to cut down the dev build only section by a lot, because I feel like it might be, um, let's go here. I, any of these, it's like tabletop alchemy, um, I think we should remove any that have, you know, um, a non-dev build only alternative, um, with the exception being, excuse me, my own signpost fast travel, because those do, those plugins can actually load alongside the, the normal Peter bit ones. Um, but yeah, like tabletop alchemy, I feel like as long as, um, at home alchemy is on here. We probably shouldn't include Tabletop Alchemy, right? Because then it becomes, we have to, like, explain to people, make sure you uncheck Tabletop Alchemy, you know? Um, I know to do that. But not everybody does. And so, yeah, I just feel like, eh. So we should probably ax some of these out of here. Um, and so, yeah. Yep, yep. Okay, yeah. I'm going to knock those out right now. Thank you, Altari. I appreciate that sanity check. And, yeah, I think it's just, I think it's a sensible approach for now. Um, until 0 0.49 ships. So let's go ahead and, and change that. Cool. Thank you, Gonzo. Appreciate it. All right. Let's uh, knock it out of here. Much as it pains me. I think it's for the best. All right. Good. 
good, good. That's my main concern about that. Um, we can check. We can check this off. Ooh, folder deploy script. Oh. Yeah, Eltariel, thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. Yes, indeed. So, should we knock those out too? I wanted to put them here to kind of like tantalize users. Like, hey, look what you could have. Um, but at the same time, you know, um, I feel like people that really want to know about this kind of stuff can hop on Discord and, and be in the know. Maybe we should take those out too, you know. So we're talking of like... Um, corporeal carryable containers. Arguably most wanted Nerevarine, although that's a cool one. Dynamic music 100% stays. Um, no sneaky sleeping to... Well, no. I don't think... This one kind of would conflict with uh, faction. Maybe. No. Maybe not. Um, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Hmm, Interesting. So, yeah, Gonzo, so maybe you could clarify for me then, because what I was planning was we'll create for Linux and Mac, we'll create a bash script that users can use, which will make all the folders in the right place. And then for Windows, we'll make a PowerShell equivalent that does the same. Um, were you thinking something else? Um, I'm a little reluctant to make people have a Python script, but at the same time, they're going to be you know, needing Python for, like, ground cover if I, so maybe it's a moot point. Buttons for each preset, okay. Mm. I get you. I get you. Right, we definitely need that. Python function on the site. Yeah, I, fo I follow you now. We definitely, absolutely need that. Um, and, yeah, maybe it should go on the... Uh, I'm not going to put it on the CFG generator page. I don't know. It'll make it too cluttered, but we got to do that. All right, let's take a look at that code. Oh, boy. <laughs> so let's actually look at the website first off. This is a deep, dark corner of the code we haven't looked at in a minute. Don't get too afraid. GS directories. Okay, yep. We will go there. And so the page Gonzo is referring to... Is... Uh, could I just go on here? this page and so we got down here yeah okay very depending Smalley and I have a pizza cooker with a typo on it and it says very with an E very depending <laughs> um, all right let's uncomment that All right, here we go. This cursed co unfinished code is one of the last, you know, one of the last things we gotta do, okay. So for now, we're just gonna default it to total overhaul, and then we'll implement the form where you say, you know, give me the folders for this mod list or that one. We'll go from there. We'll do it incremental. Uh, oh, look at this. We've been here before. All right. I'm gonna write write out what we should do to make this work before I try to like get lost in some code. So first off, yeah, for sure. And you know what? That's an acceptable, in my opinion, that's an acceptable compromise. Um, well, so actually, taking a step back, we. Could could implement the personalized list 
but it would require some shenanigans. Um, and so maybe we can make that a nice to have pre 2090 or maybe post 2090 nice to have. Um, so, so first off here, we're going to one get each category. Yeah. Later on, right? Like some of the other janky stuff, um, that I probably won't fix before we launch 6.0, like the big check boxes, not checking when you select the whole sub list, stuff like that. Um, that I've already banged my head against the desk on quite a bit. I don't want to delay over. Um, we can revisit, though, for sure. Get each category. For each category, get each mod base data path. In a nutshell, right? Just three steps is all we need. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, we can do that. Um, we can load the user settings JavaScript on this page and uh, and modify it in real time. That's a good call out. For now, I'm not going to worry about that. But before we, you know, call this one done, I feel like it can't possibly be this easy. But let's just let's head it into our friend the shell. Actually, I'm gonna no. Let's go in here. Okay, make shell. Okay. From uh, uh, models, okay. Category and category mod category. Hmm. Okay. I don't call them mod category. I call them just category. Fine. Ooh, actually, let's take a step back here. Uh, let's get a single category to play around with. Play around with? What do you mean? I mean this. So I have C here, which is the animation category. And what I can do is now I can hit period and then tab. And we have this interesting thing here where I can say mod set. Uh, all. Ooh. And suddenly now it becomes like this. For category... Category objects all for mod in category mod set all print mod. Whew. All right, uh, so that's literally printing every mod. <clears throat> so, um, but you get the gist. This is how we would we would say, okay, um, print category. Or we wouldn't do this here. Check it. What I mean is, whoa, whoa. Hang on. We would do this. To get it a little more. We can see here kind of how it's broken up, right? All the different categories. Everything is grouped. Okay. So, what do we want to do here? Let's, um, now for each mod, we want to do what? We want to get the base folder path. Not any sub paths like 00 core. We want to cut that out because the users are going to get that from extracting stuff. Okay. So, let's see here. Let's look at the code here. I forget what I actually gave myself to work with here. Models, there we go. Linux. Oh, I see. I see. Here we go. Here 
we go. Okay, get modder. It's a little unfortunate I have this, um, you know, we're gonna have to know, try to know your user agent, but let's not worry about it. Get modder Linux. Everybody uses Linux, right? And boom, there we go. So if we try our massive for loop again, and actually we're gonna just delete, whoops, whoa, what did I do? Don't try that at home. We'll knock out all that extra stuff. Get mod. All right, whoa, how about that? So now we would say for the folder deploy script, it would look something like this for Linux uh, and Mac. This would, this would apply to Mac too. But rudimentarily, huh? Boom. and then we'll put that in a bash script. Uh, Gonzo, you're the resident PowerShell wizard. So uh, maybe you can look on the, uh, or maybe we have the format of what PowerShell is supposed to look like here. Um, wow, look at all this. Other, I'm just deleting all this other code that I had because it's just going to confuse me. <laughs> all right. All right. Delete it, delete it, delete it, delete it, delete it, delete it. Does this include subdirectories we have users make? No, because right now I have no way of, right. I have, unfortunately, I have no way of knowing about that. Um, if we take a step back and think about that for a moment. Right now, those things exist. Correct me if I'm wrong. Those things exist as usage notes, right? We tell people in text, in the usage note, create a folder called this, that, or the other thing. So what we could do, oh yeah, that's true, as the folder pass. So here's the thing, we don't, they do exist as data in the YAML, but there's no way to differentiate between which of these are extracted from the mod like in this case, and which are ones that we want the user to create manually. Now we could do something like this. And we can say, you know, if it's a manual one, put that in there as well. That changes the schema, of course. Um, it's not a big deal, but we could do that. Whew, all right. All right, we're doing it. I'm convinced that's a sensible approach. So let's add that to the schema then. Class data path. Right, and so... Whoop! Don't try that at home. Yikes. It's too easy for me to accidentally... Control C and then like fat finger or control X and fat finger the control Z, which in my Emacs control Z X is how I minimize or X Z. Anyways, all right, so I'm just gonna add another field here manual models. Come on, you can do it, language server. You can do it. Okay, I'm not going to wait for you. All right. There's just one more thing to do, which is the good old make make migrations step. Adding manual to the data path right there. Whoop, whoop. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, so actually, take a step back. We are... Sections a bit. Okay. New manual field. Uh, 
And uh, so what is a uh, main silent islands? Is this one we have to make? Thank you, Altario. Create a folder called Atlas. Here we go. And uh, I'm just going to put this one in here for now as a, a test case for our point. We'll go back to the view code. And uh, we're going to actually bump this to four. So our, whoa, 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 our new step three is going to be. Check if that data path has any manual subders. Okay, um, I'm sure this is glot. This is going to be a little bit complicated. Anyways, let's write this out right here. trying to think how we're going to ship this off to the front end um and i for now we're just going to do a list of paths yeah yeah list of paths linux paths linux That's okay. I don't know. Let's just look at it on the page now. Me and my fat fingers, I tell ya. GS directories. Okay. You know, I never loaded this page after we uncommented the magic. So let's do that. because my data and <laughs> now we're just gonna ignore that actually my data doesn't have the new schema and it's helpfully letting me know that's so great thank you okay wow okay uh. see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen. Ooh. Hey. Ooh. Okay. Let's clean that up a little bit, huh? Ooh. Ew. No good. Better. 
Hey, look at that. Okay, but wait, you'll note there's no... Okay, so we got a... No problem. Okay, this is wrong, though. What is... We shouldn't actually need any of that. We haven't actually set anything custom, so I'll do that. Uh, home, Fargoth. If I refresh the page, give me my Fargoth path. What? Okay, that's broken. I'm not going to stress about that too much right now, but we will obviously have to fix that. Wowee. Looking pretty good, though. The majority of stuff is here. Um, ooh, we're going to want to exclude some stuff here, though. Actually, this shouldn't be all, right? Yeah. Okay. Because this is literally everything. Okay. So now we need to see if the mod is in the mod list um, that we're working with. Let's go back to the shell. Mm -hmm. Alright. So we got Corel's interior weather. How can we find out if it's on a mod list from the mod? Here we go. Listed mod set. There we go, okay. So we'll come back here. should give us what we need we're hitting the database quite a bit here though each time we do one of these set queries <clears throat> it's um it's a bit expensive and i wonder if we could do some select related magic here actually like uh select related That's actually going to blend, but I'm trying here to basically reduce the pressure we're putting on the database so the page loads fast. You know what I mean? <gasps> the choices are none. Okay, that was a bad. That was a bad thing I did here. Yeah. Ooh, okay. We cannot select related on that. It feels wrong, but I'll roll with it for now. Change category. All right, we're gonna revisit that. For now, I'll just accept that I'm destroying the database a little bit more than I need to. Wow, that's killing the database. This is no good. should not take this long to load and as you can see we'll see what our friend the, the debug toolbar tells us about how much I'm killing the database but this is just let's go into the code in a different terminal Yeah, 
that select related isn't going to do anything for us, unfortunately. Okay, wow. 2,614 queries. Oh, no. Okay, oof. Big oof. Big, big, big oof. And I didn't even get anything. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Feels terrible. Let's take a look at the mess I created. This is no good. All right, I'm not even gonna bother. Oh, here we go. 1,008 similar queries. Yeah, by listed mods. All right, well that didn't even get us anything anyways, so back to the drawing board. Sector, hey, welcome. Glad you're here. Happy Saturday. Just chipping off some of the final 6.0 stuff. So you join just in time for some Python head desking. That was me head desking over this. Wow, okay. So this is, I think, where I'm really killing the database, and then the extra hammering here comes from. Okay. Maybe I saved a little bit of time. to do a join. So select related does what's called an SQL join. And I believe I can actually save by joining on mod lists here, which will pre-calculate this in advance. In theory, it will take fewer queries. Yeah, okay, so we cut our queries in half. Still sucks. 1,069 queries. It's still terrible. know what and also it's uh it's not gonna be total overhaul slug it's gonna be excuse me wow we typo city um the mod list slug is gonna be the sub list right when you go through total overhaul there's a bunch of we got a bunch of sub lists here so it'll be total overhaul, you know, uh, if I click this, for example, total overhaul patches and so forth. So that's why it's not catching. cool I know a couple PHP guys you know do what you like I say and PHP has come a long way since I first ran across it or PHP four days um, okay this is a little bit better still unacceptably slow but I also wonder if we can rely on server caching for this too um, so mind-numbingly slow however I don't wanna, we don't need these settings tweaks Filter out settings tweaks. Yeah, but this looks to be just total oversaw, oh, just total overhaul stuff, and not you know every friggin' mod in the database. So we're we're making some progress. This might be one of those pages that is a little brutally slow. Um, 
but on the server it'll work well. Is that? Yeah, okay. No. If I can do another select related though, that might be enough. I'll wait till this loads, because otherwise I'll make it blow up. Here we go. Ah, good. Okay, so we can see it work. There's no settings there. Good. Oh, really? Gonzo, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm sure, right? <laughs> 12 years ago, that's about when my first exposure to PHP was, too. Um, I began working with, I don't know if you're familiar with well, like cPanel and all that kind of stuff, but it was basically like a rubber stamp way of getting a WordPress website stood up, you know, circa 15 or so years ago. Um, all right. Does this get us anything? Yeah, cPanel, that was like the thing, though, at my first couple of jobs, right? I was a cPanel janitor, basically. <laughs> I knew all the tricks for unborking cPanel. Okay, cool, Gonzo. That's excellent. Okay. Wow, that would be really sweet if I didn't have to do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun to meet somebody who knows what cPanel is. Oh my gosh, look at this. I have a feeling my select related didn't do squat, unfortunately. But uh, we'll just check the handy toolbar to be sure. Okay, yeah. Nope. No reduction there, but I am curious to see how it performs on the server, honestly. But, wait. There's still more we need to do. First off, we got point number three here that we never handled. We handled one, two, and four. I skipped this one because it was hard. So let's see here. So actually, we're going to need to recrunch our data, unfortunately. And then I'm going to go ahead and hop into the shell, and we're going to play around with Mac and see um, how from the mod object can I realize and know that I have to manually make a boulder, and which one is it. Right? And then we'll go back here. Um, I'm going to check that off. If None of y'all did that while I was waiting. Um, by the way, this one tests Selenium and otherwise. I'm going to go ahead and check this off and actually strike it through. Um, I'm not going to block 6.0 on having this, but oh, we sure do need tests, like desperately. Uh, this is already done, actually. So yeah, I'm going to mark that off. And I, we do have a separate issue dedicated to testing, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a thing that we're going to get done. But yeah, I don't want to tie down 6.0 um, on the need for that stuff. It's needed, but like, you know, we can we can go without it. <laughs> um, and this is really like it. This, Sophie's patches, um, and the logs on fire patch, I think is really all we have really to go. And this one should be, you know, no big deal. It would actually be cool to do this one in Lua. We could just on the fly replace the logs, you know, with the LOF versions. Uh, ooh, and I will note, we do probably still need to have a couple of eyeballs on this section because I'm not, I'm still not 100% sure which ones, um, <laughs> I appreciate that, um, XB7. Appreciate that. I'm not 100% though on which of these do we simply rename and which of these do we have to use sectors. Um, Sector has like a bump map fixer tool. Which do we use that on, you know? And I think that is one of the last things that we should iron out. I don't think it should block 6.0 coming out, but this is something that we got to... If we don't block 6.0 on it, we should open an issue specifically about this stuff so we can solve that mystery. 
Oh, right. You mentioned that, Altario. Yeah, you would have a tricky trans... Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. It would be tricky to transform them, but, like... Once you figure out the transform, it would be easy, right? And by the transform, I mean setting up the two things so they look right. Spawning them and then positioning them right, like... Yeah, it would be pretty tricky. Um, all right. Here we are. So... Oh, my. Ah, <laughs> Sophia. You know what? Thank you for mentioning that. I have to break to show this. Um, this is one of those things... Uh, one of our awesome users reported on Discord about some overlapping mushrooms. And this is one of those things that's actually in the vanilla game that I never really noticed. But I had to do a double take when uh, it was reported. Yeah, agreed, Sector. Thank you. Let's take a look at this real quick here. Uh, I gotta fly over here and just show you this thing. It's so wacky. But yeah, yeah, we have a user um, who's helping out, you know, with reporting problems. Um, <laughs> Users helping out with reporting problems. Um, graciously, we're so thankful. Um, and uh, not gonna lie, when I saw this, I had I just had to like sanity check myself, you know, like because it seems like something that could be an error with a big mod list, right? Overlapping mushroom that could happen, right? But it turns out this is as Todd intended. Exactly. I'm talking about this one right here, the Todd fix. <laughs> see look at this masterpiece right here so uh, yeah Sophie I mean I'm down to fix that for sure um you can toss a patch in our patch collection I'm a little surprised patch for Pyrrhus doesn't fix this though right I mean I would I would think this falls under like a purist fix <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> um but no seriously maybe we should hit up um patch for Pierce project and let them know like hey I, th I feel like this is in the purview of that project you know um, but otherwise yeah this, this is an easy one obviously yeah yeah I think we should do that thank you I think we should really do that because this is like bizarre <laughs> but yeah that's what Sophie's talking about this one right here you too can see this by simply you know we're um we're just near uh Balmora just to the southwest here See right there, and yeah, just this little mushroom pair awkwardly clinging together for dear life. They grown into one another. Yeah, kind of, right? <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we'll probably what we'll do is then we will um we'll reach out to the Patch for Purist project and see if this is a a thing they feel is within the scope of fixing, and if not, we can include it in our patches. Okay, coming back. So coming back here. Now we have our mod have our mind oh smallio you don't you're not sure what seems wrong with it all right all right we're going back in i gotta show you this hang on uh, no you're all good oh tool gun sector yeah 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 we got to put that one on the website too by the way all right smallio check this out Sorry about that. All right, now look very closely. You see that? It's like going inside of the, like right in the middle here. You see that small? <laughs> it's so easy to miss. I probably looked at this thing hundreds of times and never missed it. But yeah, that's the one and we can come at it from underneath and you can see, yeah, it's just like, that's not right. No, I mean, they could, right, if you made a model, right? This is just a, this is an oopsie. This is a, almost certainly an oopsie. <laughs> you know, having a mushroom cluster is not totally unheard of, but this, yeah, this is definitely an oopsie, so. 
Nope, this isn't a mushroom you can pluck small. <laughs> All right, coming back up here now to my mod. Data pads. Yeah, you're so welcome. Path in. Print. Path and manual. Did I? Oh, you know what? I might need to crunch the... I might need to crunch the database before we can actually see this happen. Okay. And everybody uses Linux. Okay, yeah, I did. I just didn't crunch the database. Is probably the problem here. I swear, I thought I did. Oh, uh, did I stop myself from doing it? Maybe. No, I did. Oh, okay. Um, so there is a link to the beta site, but it is buried. I, oh, whoops. You can come here to, uh... Oh, it's so buried. I don't even think I really have a link anywhere to it. Um, but anyway, there's the... There's an FAQ page that is probably not really linked to anywhere, and I used to link to the beta here. I guess I don't anymore. Um, anyways, open to ideas. You know, where should we put the link to the beta? Another thing I've been trying to think of is like, yeah, like how to inform users about stuff we're working on, you know? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Oh, right. You know what? I'm silly. Here we go. Data pads. We actually have to do something with this manual data. I think that should do it right there. We gotta crunch the data again. Whoops. So uh, let's think about this. Um, let's actually, let's pretend this is the main website. We've launched 6.0. Where would a link to the beta website go? Um, and how would we indicate to the users that we actually have something worth looking at there? You know, we're actually working on something. Um, I don't know. Maybe like in the footer nav down here. Hmm. Yeah, I actually kind of like that. We could put like a beta site link right there in the bottom. Um, hmm. The more I think about that, the more that doesn't sound terrible. I'm going to put that in there. appreciate it. Okay. Um,
Okay. That'll show up on the staging site. I'm pretty sure. So when I deploy, we'll see that. Actually, can we deploy? Ooh! <laughs> right, okay, okay. Silly me. Silly, silly me. Okay. I think that'll do it. Let's try that again. Will it blend? All right. So we have legacy URL redirects. Uh, what else have we been doing here? Oh yeah, folder deploy script. Um, so this is something I kind of wanted to put the seeds out there for, but, uh, I don't know. Sometime last week, uh, one of our lovely users asked in our discord channel about some way to see open MW Lua mods sorted by last update. And there's a, a few challenges involved in representing such information. Um, but I had an idea for a mod hub website that would, uh, be able to display this information regardless of where the mod is hosted too even um and i had a couple of ideas but basically it would be a static website and it would have sort of a kind of like what we have going on here where we have like structured data to represent you know information we would have a similar kind of structured file where we say a mod name where it is hosted and then a couple different ways under the hood of getting that information so if something is only on nexus for example we can open the nexus page and like scrape the html to find the last updated or something like that you know um and then that could update like i don't know some way <laughs> i haven't gotten that far along yet but yeah um yeah yeah so um absolutely so for it's tricky though because the the data in this site doesn't necess it's not the source of truth for when a mod was updated you know what i'm saying um hit the nexus api directly Ooh, well that's obviously desired versus uh scraping html but i didn't think they had an api for that being a walled garden as they are um yeah oh yeah oh yeah so in any case yeah this this is a doable idea um and it, is it is it a pre 6.0 idea no is it a pre 2090 idea yeah i think so i think we totally could i think we could have this you know with a little trouble there's a few problems to solve um but yeah anyway that's something that i really would like to get going at some point Ooh, what the oh my oh my Oh my. <laughs> wow. I can read, but I apparently can't type. So, well, cheers to that. Clearly, I need another uh, cup of coffee. We're about at time here, but we're going to keep going because this is, I think, going to be the last stream of the year. So, you know, we'll go for a little bit longer. I want to see this through to the end. But uh, this here feature we're working on is like one of the last things we need to, like, you know, fully realize our vision for you folks, so. All right, so when it gets to data paths and doesn't blow up, we know we're good. And I know that it's super exciting to watch that, but I'm gonna click away. We'll come back here. Ooh, how exciting. This is like... I mean, here we are, folks. <sighs> the time is upon us. We've been working on this. Sector asked me how long we've been working on 6.0. I want to say I started locally testing new stuff 
on top of 5.x around May or so in earnest. Um, so yeah, we're looking at six plus months of fairly aggressive testing and creating, frankly, by the community too. Grinding hard, you know it, everybody. Us, the modders, everybody. The users helping us out with uh, finding errors, you know, and just everybody coming together. It's really beautiful. <laughs> And uh, I am extremely, like, I think I'm extremely happy to see this, you know, come along this far. Yeah, amazing year. Teamwork makes the dream work. Well said, Sector. I love that. And yeah, it's been a great year. The best year of the project. Thanks to you guys, everybody. It's the best year the project has ever had. Here we go. Look at that. It's going to work. Yeah, it worked. All right. So what we want to see before we sign off, we want to see that I can, with Python code, look at a mod and tell if it has a manual folder. We can do that, right? Do you ever think there will be a package distribution? Uh, XB7, can you clarify what you mean? Because I want to say the answer is yes, but I want to make sure I'm picking up what you're putting down properly first. All right, here we go. All right. Ooh, actually, let's do this. There we go. We got a true path. Oh, I see what you're saying. Ah, yes, of course. Okay, so the answer to that is, unfortunately, no. For many complicated reasons, but the... the yeah, it would be lovely to do, and I think Wabajack is the closest thing that can come to that, but the fact of the matter is that um, mod distribution permissions are kind of all over the place. Yeah, some folks are really sensitive about distributing their works outside of their own terms. Yeah, so um, that having been said, that having been said, friend, we have a decent collection of mods that we're building here on the modding OpenMW GitLab org. And my intention long term is to build a framework for modders to easily distribute their mods in this way. People that are not concerned with hiding their mods in their parlor that are maybe more interested in open permissions can kind of jump on board this pattern and the, the mod hub page idea that I was talking about could be a central hub for these things. I've had a lot of people express concern. Oh, if you're not on Nexus, how is anybody going to see your mod? Nobody will see it. Um, and I mean, that's just a, you know, it's a logical fallacy, basically, because this many people are going to see your stuff from my website. And maybe it's not as much traffic as Nexus, but we can drive that. Absolutely. So this is one of my, like, 2090 plans. Nice. That's great to hear. Yeah, I mean, because, okay, like, forget that my workflow involves Git. Just forget it for a second. If we had a way, right, to get people on board, like with my mods, where I make a change and it's automatically published, um, if we can get people on board with that, you automatically got a neato website, right, that is automatically updated um, and, and is consistent and documented and all that stuff. Um, yeah, right. Ah, awesome, Sophia. I'm really glad to hear that. I'm super glad to have your patches in with my collection. And, um, yeah, you know, it's my dream to get more modders on board with our pattern. And XB7, I mean, I hear you totally. This is, um, you know, this is my uh, my bread and butter. I professionally work with build and release engineering. I'm a software engineer of 15 years. Um, and, yeah, so this is like my bread and butter. I do packaging and shipping and CI and CD. Um, right, Sector. Okay, so... We got to talk to Genounce because I feel like there's a lot of overlap between Genounce's um, mod gen and like this whole idea. Okay, XB7. That's a really great idea. I can't say any more about that right now. But maybe some news will be coming on that front. Okay, wow. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. No 
know it, Sophie. All right, we're gonna do. What am I doing here? Linux. Okay, yeah, yeah. Print. Whoopsie. All right, there we go. So just like that, we now know. All right, so with that, let's take a look back at our view code we've got here. And I have to fit that, I have to fit this business in here somewhere. Totally doable. Lingering questions are, how can we do it in a way that doesn't make performance really, really tank? Um, I'm about to deploy the website actually and see it happen, so we'll know shortly, but uh, I think we are going to leave it at this for today. And I thank you so much for joining me as always. Um, thanks to everybody in the community for the best year the website has had in its entire existence. Um, <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, looking forward to a 2024 and growing the site and OpenMW and everything um, with the community. And also look forward to, I just want to, as one last thing, look forward to Morrowind Modding Mastery Month, which is next month. Yours truly is going to be a mentor, and I am going to be giving a talk about how to run Morrowind.exe on Linux with Wine in the same way. So look forward to, you know, interacting with the community and doing cool stuff together. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year's. Be safe, be happy, be well-fed, and I will see you on the next stream, everybody. Cheers.